Good morning. I'm here to talk to you about something that is near and dear to my heart. And what is this something I speak of? Pan-Africanism, of course. What is Pan-Africanism, you may ask? I would like to define it for what I think it really is. That being an ideology that asserts and supports the solidarity of Africans worldwide. It stresses on the fact that our unity as Africans, not just within the continent, but as well as the diaspora, is a vital part of our economic, social, and political progress in terms of the, of the, of the continent's survival. You see, I don't know about you, but I grew up believing that anywhere but Africa was heaven. I thought that being African was one of the worst things that could happen to you in life. And who could blame me? Look at the prevalence of tribalism, imperialism, and corruption within our continent. Now, let me give you a few scenarios that happened within our own, con our own country and other countries around the continent. Who would want to grow up living in a country where your leaders are wanted by the ICC? Who would entrust their livelihood to those who use public funds as their personal bank account? And would you want to live in a country that is still ruled by the primitive, divide and conquer ideas left to us by the colonialists? I think that is going backwards, and Africa is rising and meant to be moving forward. Before discovering what Pan-Africanism was, I would have told you that anyone who wanted to live in these conditions is crazy. However, now, as a Pan-Africanist, I tell you that I relish the opportunity and the chance to live in any one of these hell holes within the continent. You see, I understand and accept the challenge of uniting Africans and making it the next big thing, not only as a Pan-Africanist, but as a youth as well. If we had a standard of leadership where we were able to hold our leaders accountable for their scandals, iniquities, and irresponsibilities, we would then move forward. From this, I have a question to ask you. Imagine, imagine what Africa would be if Africans loved Africa as much as the rest of the world loved its resources. We would not rely on the aid of foreign entities. We would not be the beggars of the world. We would be a force to reckon with. We wouldn't look over at Zimbabwe and Uganda and say, if they can do that, so should we. No. Instead, we would be our brother's keepers. Or oh, there's famine in Ethiopia. We've got some maize right here in Kenya. Why don't you have some? You need some election monitors in Zambia. We've got some right here in Namibia. Why don't you use them for your upcoming election? I wonder, did you guys hear that Rwanda has that new and swift program that enables people to clean the streets? I wonder how that would fare on in Nairobi, Kenya right now. You see, what I'm here to tell you today is that we do not need, we do not need aid from countries who are only here to feed on our resources and complain about the heat. Now, with that statement being said, um, with that statement being said, I don't want people to believe that I'm here for lack of a better word to take a dump on foreign relations between African countries and countries outside of this great continent that we live in today. What I am here to say is that if we started to look within ourselves for ideas, innovations, and ways to push forward the continent, wouldn't we have solutions that the rest of the world is looking for? Pan-Africanism begins by teaching us some of the amazing things that our ancestors have done. It begins by teaching us that Africa is not a wasteland like we are led to believe it is. It teaches us of our ancestors, such as Tom Boyer, Kwame Nkrumah, Thomas Sankara. It teaches us of the amazing things that these Pan-Africanist pioneers, if you will, have done. It teaches us of the great things that we continue to do. Pan-Africanism is all about solidarity and unity. It is the idea of the Queen Zinga of Angola. 
It is the idea of the Ashanti in Ghana. It is the idea of the Zulu of South Africa. It is the idea of the pyramids in Egypt and Sudan. It is the idea of M-Pesa in Kenya, all compiled and converging into one thing, and that thing, of course, being Pan-Africanism. Now, let's talk about the media for a second. Though the media does play a vital role in our lives, some would say that they virtually perpetuate some of the heavy stereotypes that are thought about Africans today. Don't get me wrong, politicians do play a major role in why Africa is seen as what it is today. Now, by a show of hands here, how many people have traveled to another country and been asked some ridiculous question because of being African or having African descent? Believe me, I know the feeling as well. You see, as an African, I want to tell you, I want to tell you the cold, hard truth that tribalism is our only authentic identity. Take, for example, the 2007 post-election violence that arose in Kenya because of corruption and tribalism. A study conducted by Stephen Keveridge in 2008 showed that 58 58% of Kenyans didn't even know that their parties had a manifesto. Now, is that to say that we as Kenyans cast our votes primarily because of the candidate's charisma? Was it the candidate's wealth? Was it the candidate's looks? No. It was, it was because we have been conditioned to think that we have to make, we have to make a choice based on ethnicity. I'm not here to say that you shouldn't be proud of your tribe, your culture, or your history. But what I am here to say is, Pan-Africanism teaches us, it teaches us about solidarity. It teaches us about unity. It teaches us about patriotism. Let me give you a little history here about imperialism. You see, imperialism was Africa's and Asia's three century long fight for foreign dominance. It was dependent on dismantling national unity and replacing it with ethnic intolerance, which is what we see today. The scars of this are felt now more than ever, with phrases such as, I am Yoruba, or I am Shona, or I am Kikuyu, or I am Luo, or I am Aluya, becoming more and more inseparable each and every day. Like I said, I am not here to say that you should not be proud of your culture, your history, or where you are from. In fact, Pan-Africanism encourages exactly that. You should be proud. You should be happy. But what I am saying is, when a candidate or a person's main selling point is his ethnicity rather than his core values, his principles as a man, won't that person have a tendency towards an abuse of power or corruption? What I am here to tell you today is, we can do this without the divide and conquer. We can do this without ethnic barriers. We can do this without ethnic intolerance. We can do this without hate speech. Patriotism has no party. Patriotism sees no gender. Patriotism sees no race. Patriotism sees no tribe. What I am saying today, ladies and gentlemen, is you should stick to one political party. You should be proud of where you're from. But what I am saying is that we can do this without the divide and conquer, and we can do this the right way. We can do this the Pan-African way. Thank you.